Today, we're starting up a new unit. And today's unit is called unit number nine, Australia. So go ahead and write down unit nine, Australia. A new section or a new unit of notes. And this will be our last unit for the year will be about Australia. Once you have that, our section title is going to be Aboriginal Art. So go ahead and write down Aboriginal Art and then underline. So in this unit or in this section, we're going to be talking particularly about Aboriginal art and kind of what their artwork looked like. You can see a couple of examples there on the screen of kind of how their artwork worked. So you can see how they look very kind of natural and so forth, usually using fish or other lizards that they have in the area. I make a bullet and we're gonna write down who are the Aborigines. So bullet, who are the Aborigines? So before we can talk about Aboriginal art, we got to talk about who the Aboriginals are or what we're telling to talk about with their Aboriginal art won't really make a whole lot of sense. So who are the Aborigines? Well, first off, the word Aborigine just means native, right? So if you're an Aborigine, you're simply just native to the area. So that's what the word means. Aborigine just means native. So go ahead and make a one and write down Aborigine means native. So number one, Aborigine needs native. As you can see some of the Aborigines up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see a picture of what they kind of look like. And that particular artwork they're using there is called body art. We'll get to that body art next time, not today, but we will get to that in the future. And the Aborigines are the original people of Australia. So the first people that are there, go to make it two and write down original people of Australia. Original people of Australia. And how they originally got here to Australia is that they traveled in canoes from Southeast Asia. So they traveled from Southeast Asia all the way over to here by canoe. It was a lot easier to do so at the time period. The water levels were lower, which meant more land was above the sea level. And therefore, it was easier for them to travel by canoes from island to island and just kind of island hop their way over to Australia. Go ahead and make a three. And we're going to write down traveled in canoes from Southeast Asia. So traveled in canoes from Southeast Asia. So I said they travel in canoes there from Southeast Asia, and it was easier to do so due to the lower water levels. Now, the people of Australia, they had gotten there about 40,000 years ago. So they got about 40,000 years ago. And because they developed an island separate from the rest of the major continent of Europe, Asia, and Africa, so separate from them, they developed their own unique beliefs and kind of their own culture. Although their culture did take a pretty heavy hit when Europeans arrived in the 1770s as they were hit by a lot of diseases that the Europeans brought over. Very similar to their Americans and what happened to them. Go ahead and make a new bullet and write down what is Aboriginal art. So make a bullet and write down what is Aboriginal art. So Aboriginal art, or sorry, that's bullet. If you didn't make a bullet, that's a bullet. What is Aboriginal art? So what is Aboriginal art? Well, it's one of the last traditional art forms to be practiced. Go ahead and make one. And we're going to write down last traditional art form to be practiced. So one last traditional art form to be practiced. So it's one of the last traditional art forms to be practiced, which means it's still practiced today. So you can still find people in Australia who are Aborigine who are still using the same type of artwork as what was used by the Aborigines 40,000 years ago. So very similar in how the artwork is done between now and then. So very similar, very similar styles. Not exactly the same, but very similar in style. And a lot of Aboriginal art is based upon something called dream time. Uh, dream time is a reference to the belief of how the land and its people were created. 
We'll go ahead and make it two. And we're gonna write down dream time. Refers to their beliefs of how the land and its people were created. So write it down for number two. So number two, dream time, equal sign, how the land and its people were created. So that's number two, number two. So dream time is the belief that the ancestors of the Aborigines, they had magical powers and they were the ones that created all the lands and its features. So they created all the lands and its features. They made all the animals and plants and all that stuff, right? So they're the ones that kind of went around, they kind of made everything. So it's kind of a reference that their ancestors, you know, kind of had the magical powers and the powers necessary to create everything. So once again, we're going to see that ancestor worship is kind of playing an important role in this group's religion. We've seen ancestor worship in Japan with Shintoism. We've seen it in China. Uh, we've seen ancestor worship when we we're talking about Western Australia. And there's another place. And once again, we're going into that ancestor worship. Go ahead and make a three and write down ancestral beings had magical powers. So if number three, write down ancestral beings had magical powers. Okay, make a new bullet, and we're gonna write down bullet dream time. So bullet dream time. So in dream time, this is once again goes along with the religion. The stories of dream time, how the ancestor created world, they're just a verbal story that's passed down from generation to generation. So parents telling to their kids, and then those kids telling to their kids, so forth and so on. So it's a story that's passed down through generations. A lot of the artwork depicts, uh, a lot of the artwork that they have for the Aborigines depicts um, kind of dream time stories and so forth. So that's sometimes the artwork connects with, not always, but sometimes it is what their artwork can connect with. And according to the dream time stories, after the ancestors got done creating the land, their spirits then rested in various land forms. So waterfalls, deserts, rock formations like Ares Rock right here. So all those are kind of considered to be sacred to Aborigine because that's where their ancestors eventually wound up at and end up staying at. Go ahead and make a one and we're going to write down land is sacred. So one land is sacred. So one land is sacred. And then if you have one, two is going to be two powerful ancestors or spirits. So two, oh, contain, sorry, two contains powerful ancestors or spirits. So two contains powerful ancestors or spirits. On this slide here, you can see kind of some examples of their artwork. So we have like bark art down here in the bottom right. We got some more bark art up here in the upper right, which we'll get more into this next time about what bark art is. You can then see a instrument, a didgeridoo. So you can also see a didgeridoo. As well, you can see kind of a, what this be called kind of a dot painting down there in the bottom left. Make a bullet and write down how did Aboriginals create art? So bullet, how did Aboriginals create art? So how did Aboriginals create art? Well, when they're creating art, you know, if you're gonna get various colors and so forth in there, you have to use kind of natural ochres. Uh, ochres are minerals. And you can also use clay as well. So you can use natural ochres, minerals that you can kind of crush up like a lapis lazuli, you know, that makes blue. Or you can use clay, you know, like red clay, yellow clay, white clay, uh, to make your various paints as well. And if you're trying to make black, usually you can use charcoal. Uh, black is kind of the most common that you can find stuff in, because charcoal is kind of the most easiest to kind of, you know, use. 
but we can also find a lot of the natural natural ochres, uh, especially red, uh, red clay. You do see quite a bit in Aboriginal heart. Uh, so like right there, you can see they're using red clay quite a bit. Let's go ahead and make a one. And we're going to write down natural ochres, minerals, or clay were used to make red, yellow, and white paint. So natural ochres, minerals, or clay to make red, yellow, and white paint. For kind of brushes and so forth, what they would use is that they were generally use just their fingers to paint with, or they would use a stick to paint with. Uh, you could also use hair or feathers to paint with as well. Uh, particularly if you're going to use hair to paint with, you would use an animal that had very coarse hair. Uh, so, you know, very uh, small amount of hair, like a kangaroo worked pretty well for it. So that's kind of what you're generally used for a brush at the time period. But as I said, they would usually just use fingers or sticks to paint with. Go ahead and make a two. And we're going to write down use fingers or sticks to paint. So two, use fingers or sticks to paint. Next time, we'll talk about their various styles they use for painting. So next time, we'll talk about rock paintings, bark paintings, sand or dot paintings, and body decoration.